Americans seem more stressed about money than ever before. 87% of Americans said that inflation and the rising costs of uh, everyday goods is what's driving their stress. And that's one of the highest numbers of stress that we have seen in the Stress in America survey. Four in 10 Americans say that money uh, affects them negatively and the, and the state of their mental health. Money is a universal stressor, regardless of your financial standing. Poor mental health not only takes a toll on a person's overall well-being, but it's also bad for the economy. Workers experiencing even one poor mental health day a month could lead to $53 billion less in total income each year in the United States. Money touches every part of our life, right? And it's, you know, modern day survival. I felt hopeless. I was feeling that depression and I didn't really know what to do. It's affecting some Americans more than others. Statistics say that 75% of Latinos are stressed about money. One of the biggest anxieties that we face is how are we going to build generational wealth? So why is money so stressful in the United States? And what can Americans do to alleviate the pressure? With the cost of living skyrocketing, many Americans are experiencing financial stress on a daily basis. Something that comes up time and time again when we query Americans about their personal finances Essentially, it is the expenses that surprise them on an ongoing basis. So trying to pay for everyday items, not having emergency savings and debt. Those three issues are at the top of their list of concerns. Tanya Schultz and Lea Landa Verde became money coaches after they experienced their own financial struggles. So I was in debt off and on all of my 20s and early 30s. And around when I was 34 is when I had about $28,000 in debt. Even someone who has a master's degree in finance has their own personal finance issues, right? I was still figuring out how to adult as well as how to be in this corporate world, make an income, which for sure led to overspending, you know, lifestyle creep. Yeah, I was in this debt cycle of trying to get out of debt, paying off debt, getting back into it. And I was just tired of feeling like I could never get out of it or feeling like I was always going to have debt. More than 80 percent of Americans ages 18 to 43 said money is a significant source of stress for them. Certain individuals are struggling more when it comes to concerns about inflation and money. Between men and women, there were differences in the way they processed it. We had more women tell us that it was negatively affecting their mental health, yet men told us that it affects their mental health more often. I felt like I was at a low point because for my age and where I wanted to be, where I thought I should be in life, I felt like behind. I didn't have any savings. I was living paycheck to paycheck. In a lot of ways, money is a safety net or a source of stability. And without it, people feel vulnerable and anxious about the future. Latino and Black adults were more likely to say that money was a significant stressor more frequently than white and Asian respondents especially coming from my experience as a first gen. My parents didn't know how to navigate this financial system. That's why I even myself entered finance because I saw the stress my parents faced. So then I could learn and help protect them as well as protect the community and providing them education about finances that are, you know, transparent. Many Americans don't feel hopeful about their financial future with 41% saying it's quote, going to take a miracle to be ready for retirement. I think the problem in recent years has been that there has been this so-called risk shift, whereas the risk of being responsible for things has been shifted from others onto the individual. What can you put on that list? The cost of obtaining a college education, previously in the public realm, borne by taxpayers, we know where that's been going. The burden of saving for retirement was often more heavily owned by employers when they provided pension benefits. That was shifted to individuals with the changes in 401ks. Healthcare has become increasingly expensive. That's responsible for one-fifth of the American economy, and consumers and employers bear that burden. Americans say they're feeling pressure to cut back on spending. More than 50% of adults say they've already cut back on dining out and will consider reducing their spending more if inflation continues to rise. More than 75% of adults said they're worried higher prices will force them to rethink their financial choices. Even higher income Americans making at least $100,000 per year say they either have or are considering cutting back on spending. 
people need to have a sense of hope. And so, you know, when the economy is working for them, there's a greater likelihood that people will have hope that they can accomplish their basic personal financial objectives. Americans are making a connection between their financial stress and worsening mental health. 42% of U.S. adults say that money negatively impacts their mental health, with 28% saying they worry about their finances daily. Many Americans tell us that some of their sources of financial stress are as simple as looking at their bank accounts or making purchases or talking about money. Thinking about money or your finances, it can feel unavoidable with the approaching summer and travel plans, holidays, gift buying. All of these things are really stressful and can trigger concerns about finances. Sometimes dealing with stress can worsen someone's financial problems. An April 2020 Credit Karma survey found that 35% of respondents said that stress from the pandemic made them impulse buy. I was sad, so I would shop. And that led to me accumulating over $30,000 of credit card debt. And I had to figure out how the heck I was going to pay that off. Things are getting way more expensive and we want to experience things and we want to live. And so in order to provide some sort of happiness, I was getting serotonin through shopping. I started drinking more and I feel like eating more and spending more. So like you start doing those coping mechanisms because you're stressed about money or stressed in life somehow. And so it was leading you down like a road that I didn't want to be on, but I didn't know. I felt stuck. I felt trapped. Mental health issues can have serious consequences for a person's overall well-being. There is clear evidence that mental illness affects your physical health. We typically see stress manifest in two ways. One are physical symptoms, so things like teeth grinding, headaches, uh, stomach discomfort, muscle tension. The second is emotional responses, so that can look like anxiety and stress, difficulty sleeping, changes in your eating patterns. And so when those come together and they are unmanaged, that's where we see really negative physical and emotional consequences. Many people struggle with the shame of their financial difficulties, and it's often a burden that's carried alone in silence. And in turn, people go to great lengths to hide their financial difficulties, which further entrenches them in their isolation. And that isolation and burden can become so great that people facing these difficulties are more likely to experience suicidal thoughts and even make suicide attempts as a way to escape from their problems. While there are many forces at play that are outside of people's control, such as the rising cost of living, there are steps Americans can take on their own to help themselves feel more financially secure. Experts say the first step is examining your mindset around money. I was constantly looking for like, how can I find hope in this situation? Because you can have fear and scarcity, especially nowadays, it's so easy with the economy and inflation. We're bombarded by it every day. I'm like, there's not enough money. There's not enough money. So it keeps us in a scarcity mindset and that like fear around money. I faced financial anxieties myself and I had all the resources to actually take action on my debt or not even get into debt. But yet because of my mental health and because of the environment I was in and, and because I didn't want to take ownership of my finances, I had I had to face the realness of my debt. There are experts such as therapists or money coaches who can help people deal with overwhelming feelings as well as make a financial plan. A money coach essentially is a a partner in crime that you have someone by your side that helps you hold yourself accountable and provides you financial education at the same time with guided actionable steps forward to reaching your financial goals. I think the biggest reason there's shame tied to finances because so much of our self-worth is tied to what we have in a tangible way. So people tend to relate their job or these external markers of success numbers in their bank account with their worth as a person, which is why it can be so difficult to deal with financial issues and especially seek out help for them. It's also important to monitor your physical health. What is happening to us uh, mentally, it, it affects us uh, physically also. If, if you're not treating uh, your depression and anxiety well, 
you are probably not doing a great job managing blood pressure and diabetes and other chronic conditions. I always kind of go back to the basics, which is to make sure you're eating healthy, that you're getting enough sleep, that you're staying active, and that you're staying socially connected. The concept in mental health recovery is that a first step is building hope. We, we need to see that there's a path to recovery and that things will get better. And they usually do. Invest in you. Ready, set, grow. CNBC and Acorns.